Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I seek to answer a question that came up during a live stream. Somehow we got to the topic of putting the SLS boosters on the Kasei rocket and I wondered exactly how much better is the Kasei core than the SLS core. Now it's a shoe-in for low earth orbit capacity because it's got much more powerful first stage engines, it's got a longer uh, core and it also has a much more powerful second stage engine which means it's easier for it to push a heavy payload to low earth orbit. SLS is optimized for high orbits. Uh, this one is optimized for low earth orbit because it is the same engine that's on the first stage with all that power just with a vacuum nozzle and so it has a very high thrust weight ratio that can easily push payloads to low earth orbit whereas SLS uh, has four RL-10s, which are very light though. Uh, they are very light, but they do not do such a good job getting a 100 ton payload to low Earth orbit. What they are good at is being light, which means that they take up less payload capacity to higher orbits. So we already tested the Kasei rocket with these boosters in during a live stream and I got 150 tons to low earth orbit. That's not the main question because SLS isn't good at that anyway. What SLS is supposed to be good at is getting stuff to the moon or beyond and ultimately it would be able to beat Kasei to really really far flung places because Kasei has a very heavy upper stage. And in fact most of the extra, uh, it's heavier than SLS is by about 150 tons and most of that, I think all of that actually is in the second stage because we've got this big engine we might as well have extra propellant. And the problem with that is that we're carrying a heavy engine and we're carrying a heavy dry mass here. So ultimately uh, that cuts into the payload capacity for high orbits. So what can it do to the moon? I think based on the delta V figures in MechJeb that we can do 50 tons. Now SLS can do 37 tons. So compared to SLS, Block 1B can do 105 tons to low Earth orbit and then Kasei can, with the same boosters, do 150. So it's a little bit less than a 50% advantage. Uh, here uh, SLS, Block 1B can do 37 tons, maybe a little bit more than that, to the moon. and Kasei uh, doesn't have quite as much advantage and we're pushing it uh, if we to look at the Delta V. I'm not, it, it's really dependent on how much the high thrust weight ratio we get at the start helps. And that's, you know, dependent on drag and stuff like that because drag will hold us back. Uh, ultimately, there's a bit of a problem with the fact that the Kasei core has enough thrust weight ratio to, to lift itself up and it doesn't really need powerful boosters, it needs efficient boosters, which is why I put methane oxygen boosters with it initially. Having the SLS boosters isn't exactly the most optimal situation. Maybe having a 1.73 thrust to weight ratio at the start is positive, we'll see. Uh, so let's see what it can do to the moon. Well, it looks like if we wait until we line up with the moon, we're going to be in the dark. So I'm just going to do an off-plane transfer. We're not really trying to get to the moon with a mission. We're just trying to throw a payload at the moon, basically. So we'll launch here because then we can see the rocket. And I'm going to use a KOS script that we had cooked up during the stream. Okay, well, here we go. Testing with KOS hopefully makes it more consistent than me trying to do it myself. Okay, we're off in a hurry. As expected with the 1.7 thrust to weight ratio. Oh, I forgot. It went sideways during the stream, yeah. Uh, we gotta be edge on, not ideal. Well, we are past max Q. Okay, the boosters are running out here. And off they go. Alright. 
Oh yeah, probably the fairings are gonna go before this score finishes, so let's have them like that. A little bit cheaty. We should probably wait until we get started with the upper stage before releasing the fairings, because we're at pretty high g-force here. Uh, maybe it's alright. I doubt they'd do that with SLS though. And off go to- ooh, ooh, yeah, maybe it's safer not to do the fairings just yet or something. Yeah, okay, well let's rotate the core while we can do that. And we'll, uh, we'll do the fairings manually. Then we won't have the script do the fairings. Ejection power 100%. I guess. 8.5 tons worth of fairing. Forget if I made custom fairings for Kase. If I haven't, I probably should. These are just procedural fairings. Alright, passing Mach 3. 1 minute and 20 seconds into the launch, so really fast. And booster set. And we continue. And stage set. Maybe I should get rid of it now, but it shouldn't be too much thrust weight ratio. Well, it's one. Okay, let's try fairing set. Okay, now they're off nicely. Okay, can this get to orbit? Preserving enough propellant to get us to the moon is the question. Seems okay right now. It's trying to control the orbit by pitching down because we've got a lot of time to apoapsis this and it doesn't need that much time to get to orbit with the light payload. Or lighter than 150 tons, of course. So, I mean, the problem is the boosters and all create a very high thrust weight ratio that it doesn't strictly need for this stage because this stage already starts off with a thr thrust weight ratio of 1, so. Okay, and... Shut down. 223 by 189. And 3329 is certainly enough to transfer to the moon with some to spare, but let's just demonstrate that. We do need to do an off-plane transfer, but we'll just go ahead and do that. Well, it's not really showing me my encounter with the moon, which is worrisome. Uh, I'm thinking that this would be right, but it's not quite showing it to me because off-plane transfers of this length can be a little bit tricky, so we'll see. Uh, that would certainly overdo a transfer to the moon by any measure, so let's just verify that we can do it. We do have limited electric charge here, it's not meant to hang out for very long. I do need to change the fact that it uses methane oxygen RCS for some reason. But the upshot of all this is that just getting to low Earth orbit it can do nearly 50% more than SLS with the SLS boosters. However, going to the moon, it can't do 50% more like that. Uh, it's a little bit less than that. 50% more would be if it could loft about 56 tons to the moon, maybe closer to 60 tons, between 56 and 60 tons. It can only do 50, it looks like. Maybe a little bit more than 50, but not a whole lot more than 50. So it's a little bit of a deficit. Of course, it's still better than SLS, but then it did lift off with more, more mass to begin with. And we're a little bit slow at turning here, though. Okay, well, let's have the main engine turn us. Not great, but we do have that much margin for us. So one thing we can do to improve the Kasei rocket as far as its uh, high-flung payloads are concerned is to, instead of having five main engines on the first stage and one big engine on the second stage, having them slightly smaller and still having the one big engine from the first stage with a vacuum 
nozzle, but it'll be a smaller engine because we're using seven on the first stage, I think would be a good idea. Uh, in that case, the thrust of the engines would match the RS-68A, except these would be staged combustion engines, which means that they are more efficient than the RS-68A, which has a horrible thrust weight ratio, and also had the problematic sort of tendency to set itself on fire. And I mean, not, I mean, if you've seen a Delta IV launch, you know what I mean. They're not good at being clustered together, basically. But we basically would have stage combustion engines of the same mass, and I mean, same thrust, not the same mass, much lighter actually, because stage combustion engines would be much lighter, they're more compact. And that would be beneficial for higher flung payloads because then we would have a lighter engine up here. And it'd still have enough thrust to push all this fuel. Right, we can't make it too light, otherwise, you know, this will be too much propellant for it to push. But right now we're starting off with a thrust weight ratio of 1. And that's overdoing it for an upper stage. It's already tossed up with lots of time to apoapsis and we're having to pitch down in order to compensate for how powerful the boosters in the first stage are. And so instead of doing that, we should just have a longer upper stage. And then we don't have to pitch down like that. So now we've got this sort of orbit, but it's not really telling me that I'm meeting up with the moon. I, I'm just curious. This could obviously... Oh, there we go. <laughs> just as I start time warping, it shows the moon encounter. Uh, because it wasn't showing me the moon encounter, I couldn't get it as accurate as I wanted it. But uh, anyway, we got a moon encounter and it could obviously do the moon bit. So that's great. But let's try and compare with a version with the seven engines on the bottom and lighter upper stage engine, only slightly lighter, and see what we can do with that. The engines look the same, I just scaled them down. And we're having seven there. So there's the equivalent of seven, oh that's probably on the wrong node, no oh, maybe not. Uh, the equivalent of seven RS-68s. Take that, Constellation fans. <laughs> uh, but uh, only in thrust, not in uh, nature. Recovery-wise, we can work on that. I've got a smart reuse thing for SLS. It'd probably fit this, too. And so the smaller one. I mean, it's only slightly smaller. You can barely tell, really. But it'll save us a little bit of mass there. The first stage, because we're using seven engines instead of five, it's not saving us much mass. So it's only a very marginal change. So is it worthwhile? Delta V-wise, we don't see any benefit whatsoever, really. We see 12,295. It's not exactly a shoe in. But I think the engine is a little like one and a half tons lighter. I'm gonna try for two extra tons up here. Well, why, why don't we go all out? Uh, it's tough to say, but. And we could have done a little bit extra last time. Let's try 55 tons. We do have a little bit of extra thrust weight ratio down here as if we needed it. So it's reading less delta V than we had before, but we'll see how it shakes out. Okay, let's see what happens. And off it goes. That's so much acceleration though. And booster set. Okay, first stage is off. Ignition. And fairings. Still pitching down initially. We could probably work on the trajectory. Well, as it straightens up here, I think 55 tons was pushing it. Because 
we need about 2,700 to make orbit and that leaves us with about 3,000 meters per second left. We need 3,100 to transfer to the moon, so we're about 100 short. So 55 tons was maybe too much to try and carry with this. It could do a little bit more, I think, than the standard Cassay rocket, but, I mean, for the moon. But, uh, uh, maybe a bit of trajectory optimization would help, but it'd help with the regular Kasei rocket as well. But I guess it wasn't expected to be a huge winner anyway. Just a minor refinement. Possibly if we get down to thinking about reusing the core somehow, having seven engines on it would be better than having five. And they do throttle a little bit. Yep. Uh... A little bit short of three, oh, uh, 2,990. So close to 3,000, but what we need to transfer to the moon, I mean, roughly speaking, since we would also still need an off-plane transfer, let's just do a tangency to the moon and see. Uh, it's just sort of lightly tapping the moon's orbit. 3,138, so about 150 short, let's say. So, yeah. Um, let's see what it would take to get an extra 150 in the VAB. So, that's 12,106. 12,256. 51.8 tons. So, yeah. But, not unexpected. If we take a look at the stats for the engines, it's literally... It's literally a matter of exactly what we've got between them. The E9, the original, with uh, all that thrust, well, it's E9V, I wish it would show it like that. The original was 7.273 tons, and then the small version is 5.67 tons, so basically that's the factor, more or less. Actually, the original Kasei rocket uh, could probably take more than the 50 tons we put on it, it had a little bit extra. But... Well, maybe there's a reason for these to exist, the smaller versions, or maybe they're just completely unnecessary. I'll get your thoughts on that. <laughs> should we should we have these smaller ones? Is it more efficient, or are they basically doing nothing? Should we just have the 5 and make it feel like Ares 5 slash, uh, you know, Saturn 5 maybe, having 5 engines at the bottom, or should we have 7 and have the one up there that's smaller and go like that which is the more preferable way considering our benefit from it is very marginal anyway I will leave that to your opinion for now and with that I'll say thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time